the simple answer to that question is no. We have gone from identifying the SARS-CoV-2 virus to having an excellent vaccine set of candidates ready to go very quickly. But I would definitely not say that this has been rushed. So there's a distinction here, it's an important one, between quick and being rushed. That distinction exists because these vaccines that we're seeing, the mRNA vaccines in particular, may be new on the market, but using mRNA like this is actually not a new idea. Scientists have been working towards this type of an mRNA technology for decades. And this is where the world of what we call basic or fundamental research that focuses on underlying mechanisms of biology and the cellular, molecular, and physiological basis for health and disease. Now this research usually doesn't have an end goal or a product in mind, and it certainly doesn't need to, because its function is to brighten and broaden our understanding of how things really work. So it's this foundation, this fundamental research foundation, that allows scientists working in what we call applied research to tease out the knowledge and try to put it to a specific use, like new methods, medicines, or new therapies. So the story behind the science behind mRNA vaccines involves, well really quite frankly, hundreds of people around the world who have worked on these fundamental and applied areas of research over time. Each one contributing more and more to this knowledge base, to this research evidence. So let me share with you some of the highlights of this. There are lots of places where this story could start, but let's begin with Dr. Catlin Carrico. Back in the 1990s, she was a researcher at the University of Pennsylvania in the United States, and she firmly believed that messenger RNA had the potential to revolutionize medicine. If, and this is the big if, we could figure out how to inject a synthetic version into patients safely and effectively. Now, Dr. Carrico spent a decade working on this idea, and along with her colleague, Dr. Drew Weissman, made an incredibly important advancement in around 2005. Basically, they'd done it. They had figured out how to make synthetic messenger RNA safe for injection. And this is where the story really starts to build. Researchers published scientific papers about their discoveries, and the work of Drs. Carrico and Weissman caught the eye of another scientist by the name of Dr. Derek Rossi. Now, Dr. Rossi is a Canadian stem cell biologist who wanted to build on this work when he opened his lab at Harvard Medical School in 2007. In 2009, Dr. Rossi and his team caused quite a stir because they had indeed built on the work of Carrico and Weissman. They had successfully used modified RNA to reprogram adult cells to make them function like embryonic stem cells. So that's a story for another day, but this led to the creation of Moderna. So you can see that this interest in the therapeutic uses of RNA was starting to gain some momentum 10 or 15 years ago. And at the same time, researchers were thinking ahead of how could this type of material be used in medicine in order to treat a patient after all, you need to be able to get it into the patient and make sure it goes to the right cells. This is where the next stage of innovation in the field of lipid nanoparticles comes in. And it involves the work of Canadian research heavy hitters like Dr. Peter Koulis and his team at the University of British Columbia. Now their work actually dates back to around 1980, but they turned their attention to using lipid nanoparticles for gene therapy drugs in about 1995. Now these lipid nanoparticles essentially coat the RNA in a protective bubble, like a special package, so that it can be delivered to target cells safely and effectively. Now to make a long story short, they were so successful using these nanoparticles in a gene therapy drug that they established collaborations with other companies, including BioNTech, the company in Germany that partnered with Pfizer to create one of the approved COVID-19 vaccines. That vaccine uses their lipid nanoparticles to deliver the RNA right to your cells. Finally, layered into all of this is the research that focused on two other coronaviruses. The one associated with original SARS, which was recognized as a global threat back in March of 2003, and the one associated with MERS, which was first reported in 2012. Those outbreaks spurred the research that identified the now famous spike protein right, on a coronavirus as a good one to harness the vaccine purposes. Without that research, particularly the discoveries that were made in just the last few years, scientists would not have had the information that they needed to develop such strong vaccine candidates so quickly. 
So take for example, take Dr. Kizmika Corbett, a scientist at the National Institutes of Health in the United States, who co-led the development of the Moderna vaccine against COVID-19. In 2014, Dr. Corbett began focusing on the development of potential coronavirus vaccines. And this work was looked at the studies of SARS and MERS specifically. And with those potential vaccines, she was also looking at the viability of these new vaccine technologies, like using RNA. So when the current pandemic began, Dr. Corbett and her team were able to mobilize right away to work on a new vaccine. And they did so by using the technology that had already been developed through the years of research and experience preceding that. And so you can see that it's these small steps of progress that build over time as researchers study these things and drive that evidence base forward so that other researchers can then learn from those results and incorporate them into their own work and so on and so forth. It continues on. But that's how science works. That's how research works. And that's why these things are so really cool. Because that foundation of science discovery and evidence was in place because that work had already been done, that some very strong vaccine candidates were put out very quickly and were then rigorously tested through multi-stage clinical trials. It's like seeing a professional athlete playing the best game of their life. It's spectacular, to be honest. But you're actually witnessing something that is the result of years and years of hard work, not an overnight success. No, the science behind these vaccines has not been rushed. In fact, the story behind them and the decades of research it took to build that story is truly remarkable.